Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, you know, I've been noticing Coach Andrew, whenever he changes his strings out, he changes his overgrip. You know, it's like clockwork. And it's every one and a half to two weeks. Why does he do that? I mean, I don't change. I don't even use overgrip. But anyways, stay tuned. All right, guys, so today's coffee sponsor is Al. Al writes, Harry, I enjoy your posts. Quick question. I have an electric constant tension stringer and have switched from a hybrid, which was gut and poly, to a full poly uh, Solenco Confidential 17 at 40 pounds. I used to pre-stretch both gut and poly 10%. Do you pre-stretch Polly question mark. Al, that's a very interesting question. Um, I don't think, my personal opinion, that Polly really does anything when it gets pre-stretched. It might be more of a mental thing than anything else. Because if you string a Polly, um, you can see that it doesn't stretch much. I mean, I, in the past when I've done it, I've just done it. I don't think it makes a huge difference though. Um, for gut, yes, makes a difference. For synthetic, maybe yes. Uh, for poly, I don't think it really does anything. That, that, again, that's my opinion just from what my experience is. So, um, I would try one with and one without, and it might be just kind of a mental thing. Um, you know, I think if you believe that it does something and you believe that it doesn't lose tension as fast, I think that's more of the important thing than, you know, me telling you. But but feeling is believing. Try both. Uh, but my personal opinion, it doesn't do anything. All right? Al, thank you for the question. Thank you for the coffee. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you in advance. All right. All right. So I've actually, there's a lot of people, but coach goo is one of them that always changes his overgrip whenever he restrings his racket. So he's rotating three rackets probably every week to every other week. And then whenever he does it, you know, we, he wants a of another overgrip on it and I mean it's probably at at the point where it's a little soiled it's a little discolored he sweated on it pretty well and the tackiness is definitely not quite there anymore so I'm gonna ask him next time I restring his racket like why why every time you know because I've seen like people do it just like him all the time and people who never do it like literally years without changing an overgrip. Um, and then there's people like me who don't like overgrip and replace the replacement grip all the time only. So let's see what he thinks and we'll discuss that. Uh, all right, Goo. Hey, hey bud. Uh, Here, I just, I just finished your rocket. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I've always wondered what, why do you always like, when we switch out your strings, we yeah. change out your overgrip kind of in the two to three week intervals when yeah. you break your strings. Uh -huh. um, why do you do that? In general? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, usually for me, um, when I was younger, uh, I didn't have that many resources growing up. So what I always felt like one, the factory grips that always come with the racket, they're less tacky. They're always less tacky than I always expected it to be. And when I was little, I always played with it. But the problem was it keeps slipping out of my hand or I felt like the racket was going to go like really fast off my racket. Like it's going to fly off. And usually I have like pretty sweaty hands. So that doesn't last that long. So usually I avoided it at all cost. And then I started putting on overgrips. When I first put on overgrips, I first didn't like it. I actually really hated it um, because it just felt super tacky. And I was like, this is so different. 
but it does its job by, you know, holding the sweat and it doesn't feel like I'm flinging out my racket. But the trick part about it was I can actually change the thickness and thinness of it by stretching it. And then after sooner or later, I started kind of messing around by stretching it out more and getting to what I liked for today, until today basically. Um, I felt like I've mastered it to what I liked. Um, and that's why I usually put overgrips on because usually it's for to absorb my sweat in my hands. But also I forgot to mention, um, for me, what I always felt like to go from a two to a three, it was always this massive jump. And especially now, now today's game, or when you buy new rackets, the two and the three are pretty generous nowadays, and there's actually a significant difference. So if I try to play with the three, I actually don't need an over. I don't need an overgrip, and I do love my tackiness now, so I'm used to it, and I can control the thick, like I said, the thick and thinness of it. So I can actually measure it by pulling, or just how much pull I give, or how much I don't give as much. And then I can play around with that. And it actually kind of tailors to my game in a way and comfort, right? So that's why I usually use an overgrip is one, so I don't I don't lose my racket. And two, um, to actually just add a little more thickness to it, right? Without buying a new racket. That's actually true. I You actually brought me back to uh, my childhood memories. You know, when I first got my... my uh, childhood graphite racket the first one it was a four and a quarter mm -hmm. and four and a quarters used to be a lot more sm a lot smaller than I they know. used to be i know I, I this is like i this is my um what is it my third or fourth racket change i still have one of my old blades not the version six the version five the one that has measuring on it on the sides that is a that's a quarter that's a, a true two and i compared it to net our, like to this racket now, it's massive. It's a huge difference. Right, and twos were kind of small for really the day. Small. And yeah. they they didn't come in an eighth. They didn't come in a zero back then because everybody, the biggest grip you can hold was better for you. So I feel like my first wooden racket was like a half or five eighths just because that's just what was normal yeah. for everybody i think for me when i first one i used my dad's racket he was it was the old pete sampras one. Oh yeah and that was uh 85 that was like a that's huge i forgot what, what it was it was just massive leather yeah it was leather too so it was even worse i couldn't even hold on to the racket i was holding it for dear life so he coach Gu brings up a good point uh, i remember in my quarter i would wrap one wrap another one and wrap another one. I had probably three layers on it as I was growing up with that racket within like two years. So I would literally use three overgrips on my racket just to build it up to like a little bit over a three eighths and a little bit under a half. So yes, overgrips are definitely uh, useful for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And also the tackiness of an overgrip, a new overgrip Correct. is... Um, bar none, the best feeling in the world for people who like that. Yes. So for me, though, I don't use an overgrip because this sticks to my hand like crazy glue. And I, you know, Coach Goo, you know, you laugh at me. I go from here to here. I know. <laughs> so I flip I the thing around. A lot. Right. So I, f for me to hold on to that overgrip will be like, uh, uh, uh. Uh, mm -hmm. like hitting the brakes on for me every time that and then, true. and I don't I don't get it over fast enough to to get all the way over sometimes and that would basically that would kill me so so I need it more neutral and that's why I don't use an overgrip yeah um, I change this out maybe every month whereas coach Goo changes his out every two weeks yes so are you a person who uses overgrip are you one of those people who, when you buy a new racket, immediately put an overgrip on the racket. That's me, for sure. <laughs> That's me. Like, I feel like everybody's kind of, it's ingrained that way. As soon as they buy a racket, can we put an overgrip on that? And I'm mm. like, man, that's a brand new grip, dude. But, but I understand. I understand. I, I feel like the generations that have come down from 100 years, they're just used to putting an overgrip on just because that's what they're taught to do. Yes. But I feel like it, it ain't bad. It really ain't bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I agree with her. It's not bad. Um, it's just for me, just, 
I think just customizing it to my hand and just the feel of it because what you know, like I said before, like if you guys heard my story, I don't have like my parents didn't have that much. So the only thing we had or lying around extra when I was sponsored as a player was a lot of overgrips, like just a ton of them. So That's I was like, point. well, you know, you know, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to experiment. I don't want to feel like I want to change like my grip size because I think it's just one, I have to wait for a few days to get a new racket. And that and I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. And why not just play around with these overgrips? And then it actually worked. It worked to it worked to now I just put on overgrips because it's just easier that way to control. And I just can feel comfortable with it. And it's easy to customize, right? Over, putting on an overgrip is just like putting on a regular, um, regular like factory grip like that, under grip, sorry. But um, yeah, I think for me it was just, that's how, was, uh, that's how I was, just kind of tailoring it to my hand. Yeah, I never thought of it that way actually. Now that we're adults, I don't think about how it kind of used to be sometimes where the only way to customize it was either grip or tape or yeah. head guard tape or something that we can literally buy for like less than five bucks. I didn't, I never, I, I totally forgot about those yeah. days. I think, totally. I think that's, that's why I like, I appreciated all the rackets I've gotten. And sometimes I'm like, I was stubborn as a kid and like wanted to break rackets. But um, no, I think the biggest thing was like realizing that, you know, you don't need much to customize a racket actually. It's actually really simple. You just gotta think a little bit outside the box. I don't know if Harry does that, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in the box. Yeah, but it's okay. But like usually, like yeah, like that's the one thing I realized that I could control when I was a junior was if I wanted maybe a thicker grip size that day, or you know, have a thinner one the next day. It's easy. I can just kind pull of like take it off. Yeah, pull it tighter, and that was all. All it. Yeah, and that does. I mean, in some of the videos that I've done, I have shown you that you know thickening it out will change the balance. Thinning it out will change the balance. Is it makes it actually makes it <laughs> a, quite a difference if you don't notice it, but it does. I mean, that's why um, that's something I learned when I was young. It was like this could be changeable. Like this, you can change the weight mm -hmm. and the balance of the racket. Was putting on a, just a simple overgrip. Right. So leave in the comments, guys. Do you use it, use an overgrip? Why do you Why do you use one? Do you are you those type of people that put on one immediately? And how often do you change it? Or are you like me who never put on an overgrip and changed the replacement grip? And tell us why. We would love to see your comments. Yes, that'll be really interesting to hear about it. Yeah. I want to thank Coach Goo for hanging out with me today. Coach Goo, where can we find you? You can find me at ageu.tennis. Also, be posted content there as well. Visitor, my new buddy in town from Colorado? Colorado. What part of Colorado? Denver. Denver. Oh, the Cherry Creek fans are going to be watching this one, guys. If you don't know, Cherry Creek's one of my favorite malls, and it is in Denver. All right, taking us out. What's your name? Giselle. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Oh! I got you, Rob, buddy. Look, I got you, Rob. Oh, man. I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. Thank you for... Thank you for the weekly lesson, dude. Oh, I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. I got you, Rob. Now, if you want a patient pro just like Coach Rob, hey, play your court is the place. The, your pro can come to you, right? They can come out to your site. All you need to do is go to playercourt.com. You can even get a discount there. Playercourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Harry, are you sure you're right-handed? <laughs>